Welcome back to Eat, Drink and Explore with Cece. Tonight we're going to make a quick soup that you could make when you get home from work. It is going to be a butternut squash soup and we are going to roast it on top of the stove. We're not going to be putting it in the oven to make roasted butternut squash soup. We're going to do the same concept but we're going to caramelize that in the pot. And again, one pot, less dishes to to clean up as well. So I've got some uh, butternut squash. You can, um, you know, chop them up yourselves, uh, you know, buy the fresh one, chop it up yourselves, or you can just go and pick them up already pre-chopped at the grocery store. That's what I did with these, but they were very, very chunky. So what I did is I tried to cut them up all into the same sizes so that it'll cook together. And that's just one package of the pre-cut up, and that's about 454 grams. I'll put the conversion on the on screen for the American folks and then I just diced up a couple of um, sorry three ribbons of celery two carrots I did peel the carrots uh, just because the carrots peel didn't look very fresh so I peeled those but if your carrots have really good um, like the, it's nice and fresh and you like them keep the carrot uh, skin on because it does have a lot of uh, nutrients then I chopped up some onions and then I chopped up a uh, gala apple this is a, a one of these at one and a half and the reason why I'm adding the apple is to add that sweetness to to the dish uh, this is a warm comforting soup that uh, is sort of is supposed to have a bit of a sweetness to it as well so by roasting everything sorry by caramelizing it we're going to bring out those notes and then the sweetness will come from the apple this way I don't have to actually substitute it with uh, you know put some maple syrup in it or put some honey that's how some uh, some people tend to sweeten their butternut squash soup I'm trying to avoid that and then I have some creme fraiche to uh, put a couple of tablespoons at the end on that and then we're going to be using some extra virgin olive oil and some organic uh, chicken broth you can use any type of broth you have in there and I've made a little uh, bouquet de goni in here this is a typical fresh um, fresh bunch of herbs that you put together um, and you just got to stick them in the pot while you're cooking it's good for soups and meats and stews and stuff like that it can be made with anything really that you want so typically I've got some parsley some parsley I put some uh, rosemary sprig I had the tops of the celery so put that in at the tops of the celery so some parsley Italian parsley some rosemary, tops of the celery, and then I couldn't find fresh thyme. So I found um, something that's close, which is savory, which is its cousin. So savory has a bit of a salacious past. Um, <laughs> it, it's just a little fun little tidbit for the kitchen. Uh, like 2,000 years ago, people used this herb in everything to flavor their beans, their meats. It's very much like a, a it has like a thyme-like taste to it. It's uh, when you go to eat it, I'd like fresh like this. It has a burst of peppery note to it as well. It's not a strong peppery note, but it's there. And um, it's also, um, it was called savory. And, um, you know, they say that it inspired the term a savory sauce that came from this over here. It's also known, being, being that it's in February that I was doing this, it's also known as the herb of love. And the ancient Romans, they believed that this aromatic herb was a natural aphrodisiac. And they used it to make love potions, stuff like that. It was, I mean... It had such a reputation that back in the 1600s, the uh, European monasteries forbade the monks from growing it in their gardens because they were afraid they might fall under the spell. <laughs> anyway, just a little tidbit uh, on that. I just I always love learning these little tidbits as I go along in there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this all in. Put in a little bit of olive oil in there. Let your olive oil heat up. And then we'll just do a quick test with one of them. Perfect. The oil is nice and warm. The pot's nice and warm. So we're just going to add this in. And then we'll come back to it. What we're going to do is we're just going to let it get nice and camera camera lot car caramelized, and um, then we'll start adding in the other notes, uh, the uh, the other vegetables. Oh, 
so you can see that we've got some of those brown bits at the bottom of the uh, mm. pot. That's known as fond, F-O-N-D. And now I'm just going to add just a little bit more olive oil. And then it's going to catch the bottom bit. And you can start to see that it's starting to caramelize. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Look at that. Not so exciting. I know. I get super excited. I love flavor. I love... I love to build on flavors. And um, we're making enough of a stew for two healthy servings or four six-ounce six ounce servings. Um, up to you. I'm trying to keep it, making it a small batch just because I'm in a soup mode. I'm making all types of soup and I like to have variation. I'm going to turn down the stove to six. Lovely. Just let that go a little bit longer before I add in the... I want to get some more camera. More caramelization and I also want to uh, get some caramelization oh, I'm having trouble with that word today um, on the onion perfect look at that I decided to add just a knob of butter in here as well. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's just flavor. All of that is flavor. I remember when I first started to learn how to cook, I would get all freaked out going, oh my god, mom, mom, I burnt the paws. I don't know what I'm doing. I remember freaking out though, freaking out because I didn't understand it and she would just laugh at me. I'm going to add in the vegetables now. So we'll start with the onions. And you notice that I finally diced the onions here. Because they wanted to quickly cook. I try to keep everything sort of the same size as much as I could. So the celery and the carrots are the same size. The onions are a little bit smaller. And then I really took those chunks that you cut from the grocery store already pre-cut. And I diced those in thirds. So each chunk that they had, there was a, I made them into three. So this is perfect. Nice. Don't worry, we're going to get all of that bottom fond off the pot when we put in the stock. And we'll deglaze it with that. So we'll just let that go a little bit. As you know, I'm a stirrer. I love to stir. I think I got the onions to where I need it to be for now. And then I'm going to add in the celery and carrots. I try to, as I'm lifting the vegetables, I'm actually running the spatula to the bottom of the pot and getting all of those brown bits off the bottom. So I'm incorpor incorporating them all into the vegetable mixture. So just let this go for a little bit longer so that all the celery and the carrots can uh, soften up, get that nice, nice roasted um, flavor. As you can see here now, it's really starting to soften up. And then you can, I can still feel their, the butternut squash still has a little bit of firmness to it. I have to press hard to break that down. So I'm going to leave it here. If the more time you have to make the soup, the better. But I mean, you're doing a quick dinner for uh, a quick dinner. So you can just stop at this point once it's nice and soft and then add in the, the stock. Or you could just let it slow, slow roast on this pot, like I should say, caramelize. 
um, even further because the longer you leave it, the more flavors it builds. Now, sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're making this soup, you do, you, you do adjustments as they go and you, you try them out. You start testing it. And when you're testing it and sometimes you find, oh, it's very bitter. Well, it, don't worry about it. Just throw in the apple, like I'm just gonna, I have a shit left, I'm gonna do, and that will sweeten up the, um, the butternut squash soup. You can also counterbalance sweetness. If it's too sweet, throw in some hot pepper, um, or red pepper flakes in there. That will counterbalance it. You could add a dash of sage, a dash of nutmeg, and to give it more flavor if you find that's a little too, um, too bland. This is your recipe. Through, as I told you, you know, you just make it up. You add in what works for you, what tastes for you. I'm just giving you guidelines. That's what I do is I listen and, and read recipes and, and stuff like that. And I just take it as a guideline. And I add my, my take, what I like on it, what I don't. You know, some people might not like savory, uh, savory or might not like sage. So you can substitute with that. So I'm now going to add in some spices. So I'm adding a dash of nutmeg. That's about, I would say I added an eighth of a, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I've got uh, one teaspoon of salt and uh, one teaspoon of black pepper. And then I stir it. And then add the rest. Again, purely to taste. I'm adding the salt is because the stock that I have is unsalted. But if you are using the stock from a, from a box, make sure you watch your sodium content. Like add the salt in after you add it, add it in the, uh, the, the stock. Yeah, it still needs a little bit more. It's still, still firm. So we'll just keep moving it around. all the flavors amalgamated. Now that it's almost ready, I'm uh, gonna put in the garlic. I forgot to mention that I normally use garlic, so I just chopped up some garlic, put it in here. The reason why I'm doing the garlic at this stage is I don't want the garlic to get burnt because it, once it gets burnt, it does give you a bit of flavor. So I just do it now until, at this point, so I can start to smell the aroma of the garlic. Once I smell the aroma, that's when I'll add in the broth. Okay, we're ready at the stage for the apples. And I'm gonna sprinkle some thyme. capturing all of that at the bottom of the pot. Look at that. Scrape, scrape. I also decided because I found some ginger. I'm gonna just chopped up some ginger. It's about a tablespoon of fresh ginger. That's going to add a nice zing to the soup as well. You see how you just build up flavors? You decide, look at what you have in your kitchen, add that in. And now we're going to add in the chicken stock. So you want to add enough liquid to coat whatever vegetable quantity that you have in the pot. So for me, I used up this one of these containers of broth. Perfect. And so now I just let it simmer. And you let it simmer as long as you have time to. If the longer the better, the flavors will amalgamate, everything will be perfect. Uh, but if you need to get it on the table ASAP, 
just leave it uh, with the broth, bring the broth to boil for about 10 minutes, and then you can start uh, using your stick blender, but just be careful when it's when you use a stick blender and it's too hot. You don't want it spraying all up on you. Now you notice that I'm turning and I'm scraping the bottom of the pot just to catch all of that font at the bottom. And that will add the extra flavor to the soup. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in the bouquet de goni and I just tie it to the pot so that it doesn't fall in. Then I can quickly remove that out of the soup before I go to blend it. Nice, lots of flavor. And one of the things too is like when you use celery, um, the, the leaves at the top are so flavorful. Put them in your in your bouquet de garni. Also, um, parsley. Parsley stems are the most flavorful that you'll ever experience. So definitely add that in as well. There. Perfect. It's definitely ready for me. I let this go for about 45 minutes so simply take this out and now I'm actually going to blend it directly in the pot I would recommend if you're not used to doing this cool it down um, but I am okay with it so This is how I can get a meal quickly on the a meal on the table fairly quickly. I'm lifting the pot on on one side. Got some beautiful color to it. It smells absolutely divine. It smells like fall, winter. And the soup is definitely thick. So what I'm gonna do is you can thin this out as much as you want. You can use stock or water. You can make it as thin as you like or keep it as chunky and thick as you like as well. I'm gonna I'll thin it out. Now, you could have made this soup completely 100% vegetarian. You would just have substituted the chicken broth with vegetable broth. I did not uh, use any bacon or anything like that um, for flavor at the starter. So it's just perfectly vegetarian that you could uh, you could have in through there. Definitely going to thick that up, thicken that up. You can, um, you can also thin this out with some white wine if you wanted to. Um, a Chardonnay or even a Sauvignon Blanc would go really nicely because it's, um, Sauvignon Blanc's got a, a higher acidic, acidic, um, point to it. Um, or you can, whoops. All right. Just made a mess. Or 
or you could choose to thin it out with a little bit of beer. So I happen to have uh, a Pilsner beer open that I was doing for something else. I'm just thinning it out. Perfect. And that will also add a completely different flavor profile to your soup. I really, really enjoy having a little bit of the beer in there. That's a Pilsner. You can add any type of beer. And um, it just gives it that, that hearty fall, winter texture to it. And this is really, really good to have with, um, you know, a grilled cheese on the side, a cup of this and, a, and grilled cheese on the side. It's really nice. So let me go and plate this now. Well, there you have it. I'm gonna plate it. So the pot that I made, the pot of soup that I made, I made about 1.5 quarts of soup. Divine. So good. Beautiful. And then I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of Himalayan salt, just a little bit of pepper. and some crumb fresh. Just a dollop. Oops, went out of. Okay, we'll do two dollops. I wanted it in the center. Wonderful. Mm. Can't wait to try this. So let's give this a try. You don't have to include the creme fraiche. If you don't have creme fraiche, you can always um, use um, sour cream or just omit it completely. So let's give this a whirl. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice autumn fall. Very, very nice. And it's thin enough. See, it's thin enough because that's how I like it and I didn't 100% puree everything I still leave a little bit of chunks in there but it's thin enough that you can spoon it or you could put it in a mug and you can sip on it as well so let's try another one yes I'm happy with that super super happy with that well, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. It's always greatly appreciated. And if you like this video, please hit, think about hitting that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. We are truly trying to grow the channel and you need your help to get the algorithm for YouTube to uh, recognize us by you hitting that like button and hitting subscribe. It will definitely help us out so we can bring you more of these recipes along the way. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, greatly appreciated. Ciao for now.